video 8 cloud segments we are now going to understand the features differences similarities advantages and disadvantages of different cloud segments there are three main cloud segments software as a service pronounced SaaS, platform as a service pronounced PaaS, and infrastructure as a service pronounced IAS SaaS software as a service is where your application and data are both in the same place for example Google Docs Salesforce etc any service which has its application and data in the same location and which provides you API's with which you can interact for example let's say your company wants to deploy a human resource management system you have the option to buy it as a software and deploy it in your own infrastructure or use an online version of it where everything will be readily deployed for you in the second case you're using a SaaS software as a service using API's that is SaaS application provides you can configure the application so that whenever a new employee joins and a user record is created for him in company's active directory a corresponding user records get created in the human resources management system moreover as number of employees in your organization grow you don't have to worry about scalability part of the application as it is inbuilt in SaaS layer IAAS infrastructure as a service let's say you're designing infrastructure for an e-commerce site so what would your infrastructure look like you would have a data center let's say a load balancer some servers running the code you have a database some storage where product images are stored etc in infrastructure as a service you are selecting and handpicking each of these components you decide what kind of storage you need and what is the best product for this you would potentially go with either Amazon S3 or Azure blob storage or something like that you are also responsible for figuring out how these different components interact with each other for example the storage component might not give you an option to mount it and the only option to use the storage component is through APIs in this case you will have to make sure code running in the execution machines are able to call the APIs to store data and if the storage service allows you to mount and that works better for you you might just do that each of these services is behaving like an individual building block where you can pick and choose where you can plug in the service to power your application these are called infrastructure services they provide you with building blocks of core infrastructure entities like storage and execution for you to design your infrastructure here once the infrastructure is provisioned you can use it in any ways you wish to but you are also responsible to make sure things are up and running for example a virtual machine might have been provisioned for you but it will be your job to make sure a web server running on this virtual server is not down platform as a service pass let's say you are going to use a platform as a service how it is different from infrastructure as a service is that here the only control you have is simply the location where to deploy the applications you don't get to choose the building blocks an example is Google App Engine when you deploy an application to Google App Engine if you want storage you call API's and internally it will use storage and store data there if you want SQL you have to use some libraries that will allow you to write queries which will get stored internally in the database platform that Google has at the end of the day you're calling the API's and internally Google takes care of everything where your data is stored where your tables are stored as long as you call the right API's Google will do the right thing load balancing is automatic and if your request rate increases it will automatically be able to load balance this is platform as a service you don't get to pick and choose the infrastructure components and you don't get direct access to it in most cases you only get to access 
these components through APIs. Also, you have to follow the protocol set by the platform. For example, Google App Engine currently only supports PHP, Java, Python, and Go. So you have to write your code in one of these languages and properly use the SDKs provided by Google. On infrastructure as a service, you are manually controlling your execution layer, your load balancers, your backend, but here you just deploy your code and everything else is taken care of for you by the platform. Flexibility versus responsibility. So as you might have already guessed, platform as a service has lower responsibility, but with it comes less flexibility. And though infrastructure as a service has greater flexibility, it has greater responsibility. Software as a service has very little flexibility and thus very little responsibility. So the more flexibility you want, you have to be willing to take on more responsibility. Key benefits, software as a service. In software as a service, there is no installation and maintenance requirements. You just create an account and start using the software. In software as a service, there are no upfront licensing costs. In most cases, software as a service gives you the ability to access the application from anywhere with just an internet connection. Software as a service gives you the ability to access from multiple devices, whether that be Mac or PC, mobile or tablet. SaaS products usually have better SLAs than one that can be achieved on their own. The uptime we get from seasoned SaaS players is usually better than what we can achieve on our own. For example, if you are running an exchange server in your own data center, you can almost never match the availability of similar SaaS products like Google Apps or Microsoft Exchange Online. Key benefits, platform as a service. Platform as a service requires even less upfront capital. As you are just deploying code to the platform and most platforms only charge you once your app is used a lot, you can start up an app for almost free. Using platform as a service requires less knowledge and skill to develop and deploy applications. While using infrastructure as a service, you will need to know things like how the network works, how the storage is set up, etc. In the platform, all you need to know is the APIs. Thus, even someone who has no idea about how load balancers and routers work can potentially write a very successful and scalable application with just the good knowledge of APIs. While using platform as a service, you pay for only the resources used. Mostly the billing is based on the CPU cycles you use and the bandwidth. Using platform as a service allows for easy and rapid scaling. With PaaS, you are able to scale faster than infrastructure as a service and the platform takes care of more scaling needs. Using PaaS leads to rapid time to market. In infrastructure as a service, you would still have to architect different components of your IT infrastructure. Here, you just have to code and deploy. PaaS takes care of non-core but critical platform components. Using PaaS leads to drastic reduction in IT staff required for software maintenance. In infrastructure as a service, the hardware is not your problem, but you would still require software maintenance team to do the patching, upgrading of software, etc. Here, you don't have to do anything like that. The platform takes care of it for you. Key benefits, infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service gives you very high flexibility. You can pick and choose each of your infrastructure components, even use components from different providers. You are not bounded by any particular programming language like platform as a service. Using infrastructure as a service leads to drastic reduction in upfront capital investment because you can provision these resources from the cloud. Infrastructure as a service allows you to scale easily and rapidly. But of course, an architect is needed to be able to design the scale up and scale down. You pay for only the resources you use. You pay for what you consume. If you use more servers, you pay more. If you use less servers, you pay less. 
using infrastructure as a service leads to drastic reduction in IT support, networking, and system admin staff required for maintenance. Your need for people doing networking, IT support, system administration is reduced. Some personnel might be required, but it is drastically reduced. Infrastructure as a service takes care of non-core but critical infrastructure components. In this video, we have taken a look at different segments of the cloud, how they are different from each other and what are the key benefits of each of them. In the next video, we'll take a look at various cloud deployment models.